What's up, everybody? John the Morgal here, going to do a uh, video response to uh, this guy, uh, David Seaman. Uh, I'm not going to dog on his last name. His name's David Seaman. He's a uh, he's a globe ahead, globe earther. Um, he's really ridden uh, the crest of the whole PizzaGate wave. Uh, he's he's really one of those PizzaGate researchers. You know, the color by numbers sort of researchers who uh, you know follows the FBI's suggested tips for researching the PizzaGate theory. You know, uh, geez, pizza means a little girl and a hot dog means a little boy. And you know, not disputing the fact that the elites in government and high places are pedophiles and trafficking children and doing all sorts of vile things, probably sacrificing humans and just you name it, they're doing it, not arguing against that, uh, just arguing against the whole Pizzagate scandal which has produced zero actionable intelligence, it is all circumstantial, uh, based on circumstantial evidence and um, to date has only shown uh, many honest truth seekers to be poor researchers and is really sort of... Uh, the breadcrumb trail has led them down the garden path to nowhere in terms of Pizzagate uh, being this, uh, you know, and perhaps, the, uh, you know, these Oliphantus guys or whatever, whoever they are, are raping little kids underneath their pizza parlors, but there's no proof of that. Um, all you have is alleged uh, emails that were sent back and forth using this code that uh, somehow, you know, you clever researchers found the FBI, you know, they have all this great information on how you can follow their suggested clues to reach the conclusion that someone talking about ordering a pizza and having their children over, you know, to a friend's house, they're, they must be raping their children, right? Okay. So anyway, uh, this guy, David Seaman, uh, presents his case for the globe Earth by denying the facts, uh, totally not proving whatsoever that we live stuck to the side of a spinning sphere in the void of outer space, of course, but he just bases his arguments on his ignorance of the truth and his unwillingness to humor uh, hypotheses that are outside the realm of his comfort zone, uh, which is common. I mean, we see it all the time, right? I will uh, intend to show that this guy, uh, while his heart may be in the right place, um, he's 100% wrong. And um, I hope, you know, you and your researchers, your uh, journalist crews can, um, can debunk this. Um, and I don't mean going to a website that the FBI has made for you to, you know, list the reasons to debunk this, but actually go out and do some experimentation for yourself and, and debunk this truth. So uh, here you go, ladies and gentlemen. I'll put a link to the, oh, the name of the video is, um, let's see. Flat Earth Theory, Antarctica Alien Reclamation Zone Fake News. So, that's a very bizarre title. Um, but yeah, so we'll just go on with the video and show how this guy here, David Seaman, does improve anything but his ignorance and uh, brainwashing that we're all very familiar with. What are we supposed to ex uh, expect from Pizzagate proponents? Um, and again, not disagreeing with the fact that there are, there are pedophiles in high places probably doing human trafficking and, and all sorts of ill things. Um, the problem is, is the Pizzagate scandal, there was no actionable intelligence, it was all circumstantial evidence, and very poor research, and just this viral sort of, uh, I don't know, smorgasbord of um, regurgitating what other people have told you and uh, you sort of follow the whole drip with Pizzagate. I made a video about it, you can, you can get my thoughts on that. Uh, so anyway, David Seaman. Hey everybody. So I'm surprised I even have to address this, but I've been seeing more and more flat earthers uh, and these flat earth theory people, uh, they keep interjecting where they're not welcome. Right. So um, first of all, I can believe that you're making this video because this is probably the most important topic that you'll ever come across and there's a lot of people that are very excited about it that uh, 
you know, we do live in a free country. We, we all have this thing called the First Amendment right to free speech to where we can all interject as much as we, we want, truthfully. And um, I will say with the caveat that as long as it doesn't, you know, negatively affect other people's lives. And I would say that, you know, slinging accusations of uh, pedophilia and human trafficking on people without any real evidence would be, you know, sort of crossing over that realm of, you know, your freedoms end at the tip of your nose sort of thing, right? So as long as your interjections don't uh, adversely affect others' lives, then, you, you know, you're free to interject as much as you want, honestly. Now, I do apologize if any flat earthers, flat earth theory people are interjecting where you don't want them, but you're, you're kind of stuck with it because, in fact, the Earth is a stationary plane. It's not a spinning sphere uh, zipping around in a vacuum in outer space a million miles an hour in seven different directions at once, okay? It just isn't. And um, this has been proven a zillion different ways. I'll probably do it a little bit here in this video just to show you um, that this is true, but I would urge you to actually go and research this. Um, Two good examples would be a full moon in broad daylight or a crescent moon in the middle of the night. You can't have either one of those in the heliocentric model, yet we see them all the time. Okay, so I uh, just wanted to get that out there because uh, flat earthers have, as far as I know, haven't adversely affected anyone's lives. Um, at the very least, flat earthers are, you know, helping people to revisit science, what we've been taught uh, our whole lives in our education, questioning the fundamentals, uh, things like gravity, which has never been proven, uh, things like uh, space-time as this intermeshed fabric of nothing that somehow creates the uh, centripetal force to counterbalance the centrifugal force of the spinning sphere Earth, uh, prevents us from flying off into space, yet it can't be detected from the moon, the sun, the galactic center. Um, gravity doesn't exist. It's electromagnetism, which, you know, can be shown. Uh, but let's just get on with David Seaman's video. I've already spent way too long on this section. Sorry for interjecting. <laughs> There's my teeth, by the way. I keep smiling like that because somebody said uh, my teeth look like I'm a, I'm a monster. <laughs> yeah, and this one here got dinged in a little bit. Sorry. Anyway, okay, so we're back to it. <laughs> Uh, whenever Pizzagate is mentioned, whenever Pedogate is mentioned, uh, it seems like the Flat Earth people pop up within minutes and start redirecting the conversation to Flat Earth theory. Well, technically the truth cannot be classified as a theory, Mr. Seaman, but thank goodness David Seaman is here to save the day and set the record straight on all these pesky Flat Earth theory people proponents who keep butting into David Seaman's discussions and pseudo-research into Pizzagate um, while we actually have proof and evidence to show that the Earth isn't a spinning sphere. Uh, all Pizzagate researchers have is these alleged emails and regurgitation and the, the old telephone game where facts become irrelevant. The Pizzagate scandal is exactly, in my humble opinion, a honeypot investigation uh, possibly spun up by the COINTELPRO agencies to pigeonhole honest researchers uh, such as, you know, yourself into a never-ending, pointless investigation uh, into, you know, admittedly odd but certainly not actionable emails with zero physical evidence to support the claims made by, you know, said Pizzagate theorists. Now, this Pizzagate phenomenon that has taken the internet by storm over the last few months has survived by really creative people connecting dots that don't exist, uh, others regurgitating that and adding their own fluff and twist to it, and let's not forget the FBI's suggested interpretation for all of the code words we must follow uh, in the emails. I mean, there's exactly zero proof uh, to this false narrative that was possibly supplanted into the truth movement by the very COINTELPRO agencies you choose to follow along with in your research, in quotes, all of this appears to be set up perfectly to discredit the alternative media as being a bunch of conspiracy tards who attack people's character and even physically attack people, sling wild accusations so tenaciously based on such flimsy, nay, non-existing evidence. 
Even if those involved are indeed pedos, what do you pizza theorists hope to accomplish by regurgitating just loads of misinformation about a person's artwork preferences and a bunch of talk about pizza and hot dogs? Okay, so the artwork is a bit weird and of bad taste, but 90% of the pictures going up to represent the Oliphantus brothers' taste are often not even painted by the same artists they allegedly have hanging in their houses and pizza shops for crying out loud. Do you actually think that at the end of the day they're going to admit to anything anyway? It's not like you have any evidence to corner them with. Um, do you think that they'll be arrested or indicted for pedophilia because of these alleged emails and your uh, FBI-approved interpretation of the emails? Or could it possibly be that all the Chinese delivery places in the United States of America decided to put out this false narrative to boost their sales? Okay, I'll admit it, I don't order pizza anymore, so if I am in the mood for delivery, it's not DiGiorno's or Domino's, it's Chin Chin Chinese delivery down the road. So, should we now go around slandering Chinese delivery shop owners because I have a theory backed by circumstantial evidence? According to you, we should. Just on a side note, the director of all those X-Men movies, you've probably seen them, you might own the whole box set of them, uh, but yeah, the director of all those movies, Brian Singer, was directly accused with evidence of raping many, many, many young boys using his multi-million dollar network of casting agents and glamour to lure in good-looking, vulnerable young boys to dazzle with money and then rape them. Uh, the point here is Brian Singer and all his cohorts either got off scot frickin' free or served like six months in jail for pedophilia charges based on actual evidence and victim testimony. They even got certain agents on tape uh, admitting to committing said rapes and literally spent six months in jail. Now, I'm sorry, but I know people who have spent years in prison for simply possessing a few ounces of pot. Um, so, the, you, you know, there's obviously a double standard in this country, and raping little boys really isn't that big of a deal according to our justice system, at least not in California. And uh, these pedophiles are actively uh, trying to change the laws so that uh, they can get away with it easier, and they're, they're doing an excellent job of it over there in California. No offense to Californians, honestly. Love you guys, okay? There's a bad element everywhere, but California seems to be a hotbed for this sort of thing because you've got Holly weird there, okay? Now, do you honestly think that a case based on solely circumstantial evidence without any accusers, without any victims coming forward, uh, do you think this will lead to anything but a clenching down on our First Amendment rights because Pizzagate researchers are accusing very powerful and rich people of quite heinous and disgusting, despicable crimes, uh, possibly ruining innocent people's lives because someone told you that cheese pizza means little girl, and James Alephantis likes weird artwork. Okay, so he does like weird artwork, right? What does that prove? Uh, should we start a full-blown inquisition upon anyone who orders pizza and likes weird artwork? Uh, if that's the case, pretty much all of Hollywood and, I don't know, 70% of the United States is suspect, according to your theory. And at the end of the day, the Pizzagate theory was interesting. Well, not nearly as interesting as the actual Hampstead uh, case over in England where the two little kids accused their father and the whole entire Christian academy of not only raping them, but also forcing them to, like, chop off babies' heads and drink their blood and dance around with skulls. I mean, just all kinds of stuff with actionable intelligence, with witness testimony. Now... If you want the definition of crocodile tears, look up Ricky Dearman's sole interview about the Hampstead children's case, and then look at his acting reel. 
Okay, so the children, of course, later recanted their several hours of testimony to uh, police officers as well as psychologists. However, their initial accusations were way more believable than their recantations. Um, however, that's what we see a pattern of. Anytime, you know, high-profile uh, people are uh, shown to be really just rotten enough to just, just despicable, awful things... Uh, it often gets turned around in the courts and people forget about it, right? So we, we've actually got real fish to fry here with real grease. And in the case of the Hampstead Children's uh, bizarre case, whatever that was, and nothing happens. So yet for some reason, uh, pizza theory comes out of the gate with tens of thousands of people backing the topic based on rumor and allegation. And... According to your theory, we should go on a witch hunt based on, you know, people's taste in artwork and cheese pizza, pepperoni pizza. And have you ever thought to think why uh, Pizzagate caught on so quickly? D do you ever stop to think that Alphabet, Google, YouTube have some degree of control on what topics get pushed out like so much flood water exiting a, the broken Hoover Dam and some topics get plugged up like uh, a leaky boat. Anyway, back to Mr. David Seaman. Just really cleared everything up for us. Now, flat earth theory is nonsense. Uh, the curvature of the earth is not in question by reasonable modern people. You know, honestly, David Seaman, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And that is the problem. Uh, people aren't questioning the curvature of the earth. Well, actually, they are. And the people that do question the curvature of the earth are coming to the really bizarre and astonishing revelation that there is no curvature. The necessary inverse square curvature to result in an overall spherical earth doesn't exist, even over 50 or 100 miles of standing water, which should be a perfect curve uh, vertically declining away from the observer at about 8 inches per mile squared. So at 50 miles away, uh, for example in this uh, picture here, the base of those buildings should be a quarter mile below the horizon and yet we can clearly see the entire Chicago skyline from nearly 60 miles away, which would be physically impossible where the Earth is sphere. So, you know, the whole thing about uh, rational people not questioning the curvature of the Earth, uh, you're right to a degree. Uh, however, the rational people that do question the curvature of the Earth are finding uh, results that are simply incompatible with the heliocentric model. The Earth is not a sphere. It's not spinning. It's not orbiting the sun, it's not doing any of that. There's plenty of evidence for it, yet you think that you live stuck to the side of a spinning sphere in outer space because your teacher told you so, and you're not going to question it. Just like you're not going to question uh, the FBI's suggested interpretations of the Pizzagate emails, right? So that's how you do your research, by just uh, reading, you know, filling in the, connecting the dots that the FBI puts there for you, and... Uh, not questioning it? Excellent research, I must say. Sherlock Holmes would certainly be dazzled. And in fact, even in ancient times, I forget the name of the mathematician, but a well-known Greek mathematician well before the advent of satellites and smartphones and all of that, and of course air travel, before the advent of all of that stuff, uh, they were able to figure out that the Earth was curved and even provide a relatively uh, good estimate of how big the Earth was, they were able to do this with basic geometry. Wow. You know, I really must say that was one hell of a summation, uh, Dave. You know, that's probably the worst researched, hearkening back to some obscure ancient Greek philosopher whom you forget his name. So you, we'll go point by point. You say, and in fact... Even in ancient times, so a long time ago, uh, you forget the name of the mathematician. So Pythagoras, Aristarchus, maybe. Uh, certainly not talking about Ptolemy, right? So we'll just leave that one totally unaddressed because um, you, you don't even name who you're talking about. Before the advent of satellites, smartphones, and airplanes. Okay, so uh, first of all, have you ever seen a satellite? Have you ever seen the ISS? Have you ever been on a shuttle to space? 
Or do you just believe this because a government military agency, NASA, told you so? And I'll tell you firsthand, you've never seen a satellite. You don't have any firsthand knowledge of such things. And you just believe what you're told by NASA. You don't question anything. Okay? So, and let me just stop and say I realize how bizarre this sounds. And I, I really hope that you or, and all y'all are able to get past that initial sort of knee-jerk reaction to think that, you know, a stationary plane Earth is a stupid idea for stupid morons 500 years ago. Once you get past that and actually test for curvature, test for axial rotation, test for orbital motion, test for galactic motion and frame of reference, none of this exists, okay? And I'm not going to cite experiments. Do your own. Try to prove me wrong. Try to prove that you live on a ball that's spinning around in a vacuum, for crying out loud, right? Instead, we have to point back to ancient philosophers that you can't even name, and uh, let me give you a multiple choice here. Would you say that we are less equipped in terms of technology, equally equipped, or more so equipped than ancient philosophers whose technology for figuring out the size of the earth was measuring the shadow cast by the sun in a hole in the ground? Okay? So nowadays, I'll just answer that for you, we are infinitely better equipped to test for curvature, test for spinning, and um, we're coming back with results that just simply don't work. I'll show you some high altitude weather balloon footage here. Uh, it goes up over 100,000 feet. Uh, you can't see any curvature to the Earth. The horizon level doesn't drop as it should if the Earth was a sphere, uh, regardless of altitude way higher than airplanes fly, by the way, when you get into weather balloons, and um, there, there isn't any curvature. It's flat. It's not spinning around in space. That is a PSYOP. It started as a misunderstanding, and NASA, along with their Nazi origins, turned it into a big, huge PSYOP to trick everyone because they ultimately realized that it was wrong. Now, you mentioned satellites and smartphones. Um, I will say that uh, stuff like GPS, geo-positioning systems, radio triangulation, wireless technologies, all of that stuff was made available through Nikola Tesla back in the 1930s and 40s with technologies that he wanted to roll out almost 100 years ago. And people like Thomas Edison, uh, the Rockefellers, um, J.P. Morgan didn't want to roll out and so they suppressed Nikola Tesla's technologies gave Edison all the credit for inventing electricity when he didn't <laughs> and uh, essentially tricking us into believing that we need satellites to achieve ends that can be can be achieved indeed by ground-based tower-based Tesla-based electromagnetic field of the earth based technologies that have been around for you know 75 years and uh, you say that the ancient Greeks were able to figure out that the Earth was curved. No, they assumed that the Earth was curved. You can get into this later. Essentially, they assumed that the Earth was a sphere to prove that the Earth is a sphere. Um, and this is based on, if you're an ancient Greek and you see all of the shadows cast locally to you, the sunlight appears to be coming in at parallel angles locally. Okay? But if you were to travel a thousand miles west, the sunlight, uh, or a hundred miles west, the sunlight is not coming in parallel to that other observer. So you have a local sun. Uh, it's not 93 million miles away. Uh, it's very close. That's demonstrable. Okay, and you've got terms like crepuscular rays, which I'm sure you've never even looked into. Um, but you say that they were able to figure out the size of the Earth or estimate it using basic geometry. Okay, no, they assumed it and they extrapolated based on that assumption what the Earth's circumference would be if it was a sphere based on calculations of how the angles of the shadow cast by the Sun at high noon at two points on the same meridian separated by about three or four hundred miles and uh, that's what they used to estimate and assume that the Earth is a sphere to estimate the size of its sphericity, its circumference. And uh, 
I'm sorry, but just because some ancient philosophers thunk something doesn't necessarily mean that we are not supposed to question or revisit the topics, especially considering we have, you know, infinitely more technology than they did. So I'll, I'll just say that that was a very, very poorly done um, summation, and I'll just leave it at that for now. You just go from one city to another, and then you figure out the differential, uh, and you can figure out the amount of curve that the Earth has as a result. Uh, this is not in question by reasonable people. <laughs> okay, so let's just back up the wagon here a little bit. So you're talking about uh, Eratosthenes, or Eratosthenes, however you want to pronounce it. I don't speak ancient Greek. Um, so what you're saying, and I'll quote you, is a quote, you just go from one city to another and figure out the differential and figure out the amount of curve the earth has as a result. This is not in question by reasonable people, end quote. Okay, so first of all, you explain that really poorly. That, that doesn't even make any sense. You just go from one city to another. So Eratosthenes or Eratosthenes was able to travel instantly uh, four or five hundred miles, however far it was, it was about, it was far. He was able to travel instantly, be in two places at once at high noon at the same time, and measure the uh, shadow cast by the sun simultaneously at high noon. So, you're wrong. You don't just go from one city to another. You don't even know what you're talking about. You're just reading Wikipedia, just, just regurgitating information that's on your screen. You're not researching anything. Um... So you say you just go from one city to another and figure out the differential and figure out the amount of curve the Earth has as a result. That's assuming a, an extremely, infinitely distant sun, 93 million mile distant sun. Well, first it started as uh, a million miles, then 3 million, then up to 110 million, back down to 93 million. They can't really make up their minds in terms of how far the sun is. Now they've settled at an average of 93 million or so miles. Um, which is all based on the assumption that the Earth is a sphere, using spherical trigonometry to triangulate on the Sun. However, if you take the same data, the same <laughs> shadows, um, and assume a, a stationary Earth, you get a relatively nearby Sun. Okay, so uh, the, the data can be interpreted in multiple ways. Um, you're just reading the one that the ancient Greeks chose to use before they even had weather balloons for crying out loud. Okay, and then the final part of your quote, uh, you say again, this is not in question by reasonable people. Um, you're 100% wrong. This is totally in question by reasonable people. Um, it's just not in question by you. Okay, so if you actually stop to question these assumptions, this is the whole point, uh, you will find indeed that there is no curvature and the evidence all points to a stationary, relatively flat, you know, sort of lumpy, certainly no sphere earth okay well people if you've ever flown on a jet aircraft or if you've ever been on a boat or ship that is out in the ocean uh, you can actually test the horizon gradient for yourself uh, yes indeed you can go and check for the horizon gradient yourself have you done that I can guarantee you, you haven't and you're just regurgitating what Christopher Columbus assumed in the 1400s, okay? If you actually go and test for the horizon gradient, and no, you're, you're using the wrong term, it's supposed to be an inverse square curve, okay? Not a gradient, an inverse square curve, which means that every mile you can see across, say, uh, the salt flats, or across a standing body of water, um, every mile that you can see across that flat area should drop at eight inches per mile squared so after one mile you drop uh, you know hypothetically you would drop eight inches the second mile you would drop 36 inches the third mile you would drop 72 inches and once you get to like 50 and 60 miles the exponential uh, vertical descent becomes uh, it, it would obscure everything in sight and yet we can still see things well over 50 miles away from standing at about water, you know, sea level, or the water level. The same level as the buildings on the opposite side of the water. Okay, so where do you come up with this stuff, man? I mean, honestly, take a look at this. Debunk me. Go and prove curvature.
Prove that you're spinning in space. Prove that the atmosphere of our planet exists adjacent to an infinite vacuum, which is physically impossible according to all the laws of fluid dynamics, and yet you believe in this theory of gravity because um, Albert Schillstein thunk it. And, you know, let me just add, I, again, I know where you're coming from. I, I've been into science and astronomy and NASA my whole life, dude. I mean, I get it. The first time that I heard uh, of this flat earth theory, I thought it was the stupidest thing I'd ever heard. And it took me six months to where I actually looked at it because I wanted to debunk it because I saw, you know, quite a few flat earth videos popping up. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go debunk this. And that's when you actually start looking at this critically, not just repeating what you know you think you know, not repeating what you've been told, not regurgitating what ancient philosophers allegedly alleged and assumed uh, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years ago, whatever. Um, you know, I get it, right? But the fact is, is that you can either remain ignorant to this, right? Or you can look at the evidence. Okay, and I wished you would, because right now you're not. You're just regurgitating what you think. And a more sophisticated test, uh, you can buy a hobbyist rocket for less than $100. You can strap a GoPro camera to it. Yes, indeed, you can buy a cheap, you know, relatively inaffordable rocket. And, and you could strap a GoPro camera to it if you want to see from the perspective of a walleye trout. On the other hand, you could also strap a regular type of camera to it, you know, that doesn't curve all straight lines into a spheroid for some reason. Who would ever want that? Especially for scientific observations from high altitudes. Um, I can show you rocket launches that do not use a GoPro fisheye lens and show that there is indeed no curvature. So why in the world would you want to use a GoPro lens on this where you have to, you know, apply filters and spend extra time uh, despherizing everything? It doesn't make any sense. And, you know, I'd really like to slap in the face whoever invented those GoPro cameras. Who wants to see from the perspective of a fish where all straight lines appear to curve into a spheroid? Even if you're looking at your car from three feet away. Does that mean your car is a sphere? I mean, because you can see it as a spheroid through a, a GoPro fisheye lens? I mean, really, man, come on. You've got to be joking, right? This is a joke. Or you could do this with a hot air balloon. Uh, same thing. Um, the hot air balloons go about two or three miles. Weather balloons go like 20, maybe up to 30 miles. Okay? Just so you know. Uh, as it ascends, you will begin to see the curvature of the Earth, and that the Earth is a sphere. Uh, so flat Earth theory is some kind of weird disinformation campaign, some kind of psyop to make people not believe anything, and the fact that it pops up so closely uh, whenever Pedogate and Pizzagate are mentioned, the fact that that's when it pops up, I think it's designed to muddy the waters. Whoever's behind it, you know, I don't doubt that there are a few people who just honestly believe that crap, but whoever is pushing it continually it does appear to be a disinformation campaign. And now that Trump is in office, we need to push him when he, he has more important stuff at the moment, but we definitely need to push him to make sure that not a single dollar of taxpayer resources are going to propaganda efforts targeting the American people. Dude, honestly, you know, I see where you're coming from wanting to be optimistic about Donald Trump's presidency. Um, it's always good to keep a positive attitude. But you got to remember, we're talking about a billionaire actor um, who was basically handed a New York real estate firm, failed miserably at that multiple times, had to be bailed out by Saudi Arabians. Uh, he's thick as thieves with the Freemasons and the Bushes and the Clintons. And, you know, you can argue that he sort of has to be because he's a businessman. But at the same time, to put all of our faith into a man, Donald Trump, uh, the president of the United States, which is something out of, like, Back to the Future 2, I mean, it is pretty creepy, is extremely naive. 
And if you haven't figured out that the two-party, you know, Republican-Democrat political system that we have is essentially a Hegelian dialectic, it's a false dichotomy in order to divide like-minded people on trivial topics whilst keeping the war machine and the military-industrial complex and all of the real agendas of the Illuminati, if you will, going. Um, that's the whole thing. And even if uh, President Trump has the best intentions, which he very well may, I, I don't claim to know his intentions, but even if he has the best intentions, there's only so much that a president can do, especially if he's going up against, uh, for example, the Federal Reserve scam or... Uh, you know, something to that effect. But the last one that did, that did that was John F. Kennedy, and we saw how that turned out, right? So with all due respect, to say that Donald Trump is uh, somehow going to be responsible for not wasting tax dollars on something, um, he's, you know, purporting that his big plan is to build a wall uh, across the border of Mexico, when we already know that the, the illegal immigrants are tunneling underneath the ground to get here. Okay, so a wall isn't going to do any good in that respect. Now, I understand where he's coming from. I mean, we need to have secure borders, but at the same time, it just seems like a big way for his buddies and cronies to make a lot of money. It might create jobs, but at the same time, you know, you can go directly under a wall, which is what the illegal immigrants coming through Mexico are already doing. So, you know, whatever, bruh. Because right now we just can't be sure. Uh, there were some congressional, uh, there were some congressional bills passed that have language in them that might enable uh, propaganda to target Americans. Okay, so are you actually arguing that Americans have not been targeted by propaganda at any point in the past? Uh, <laughs> Pearl Harbor was a false flag propaganda campaign to get people like my grandfather and his four brothers to go enlist in the army and fight the Nazis and the Japanese. Uh, the Gulf of Tonkin incident uh, was a false flag uh, propaganda campaign uh, to warrant the war in Vietnam. 9-11 was a false fat flag propaganda campaign to get many of my friends and some relatives to, and even myself almost that close, to going and enlisting in the army to go fight against Iraq, who had nothing to do with 9-11 and didn't even have weapons of mass destruction. So for you to claim that we need to be on the lookout for propaganda since they've technically made it legal again, um, that's just naive. It's absurd, actually. So we have to be very careful there that resources are not being misused, that we're not using taxpayer money uh, to deceive ourselves. That doesn't make a lot of sense. And so, no, flat earth theory is not credible in any shape or form. According to whom? According to you? The one who hasn't even looked at it? Really? Okay. Huh. Uh, and uh, I'll leave that there. Hopefully that's enough of a debunking. A debunking? A debunking of what? Um... All you've done is make unsubstantiated claims and regurgitate things that we've all heard before. Do you honestly think that thousands, tens of thousands of people, rational adults, free thinkers, really smart people, some, some of these flat earthers, um, have lived, you know, 30, 40 years on this world without hearing every last thing that you've brought to the table so far? I mean, you haven't even touched on any... Uh, really anything proving the earth has curvature you've made claims uh let's see the evidence for it man i mean honestly where are you coming from and it really is i mean it's sad i understand where you're coming from i realize how ridiculous this seems according to your uh milieu according to your paradigm or the construct that you've been raised in but um if you really skeptically analyze this and go ahead and actually do the research and try to debunk uh the flat earth reality using experimentation and actual data, um, you'll fail and become a flat earther. Um, there's only, that's the only conclusion. Uh, the only other third option is that you're a liar or a shill, um, meaning that you claim to have debunked the flat earth and yet you have it. I, I do believe, um, Mr. Seaman, that you probably are a man of integrity. You just haven't actually looked at this deeply enough and considered it enough to come to any solid conclusions other than what we all already knew. Um, 
you know, what we've all been taught our entire lives. I mean, really? Give us a little more credit than that, please. I wish you would. Again, this is not something in question by modern, reasonable people. Yes, indeed, it is in question by modern, rational, sensible people. Um, it's just not in question by you. And that's the problem with globeheads, is they don't question their beliefs, or they don't question the assumptions that are the cornerstones of the heliocentric model, uh, this infinite galactic universe that only exists in your mind that you have no first-hand evidence of other than, well, you can see the lights in the sky, either the stars or the sun or the moon, and other than that, um, you don't have any first-hand evidence of, you know, other planets that you can go travel to. It's all just theoretical, honestly. Uh, and to associate Pizzagate, which is entirely real and is based on John Podesta's own leaked emails, which were published on WikiLeaks, John Podesta being Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman, uh, to put that on the same level as the theory that the Earth is some kind of massive frisbee uh, enclosed in a dome is totally preposterous. And I think that's the idea, is to make all of these independent media claims appear to be outrageous. Okay, so you just said a whole mouthful. You said um, that the flat Earth reality, the, the plain, simple truth that the Earth isn't a spinning sphere, is intended to be associated with Pizzagate, to, uh, which is based on John Podesta's emails, where you're using suggested interpretations of cheese pizza and pepperoni pizza given to you on a silver platter by the FBI. Um, to put that on the same level, and I'm sort of uh, paraphrasing here, to put that on the same level that the Earth is a frisbee enclosed in a dome uh, makes all independent media claims appear to be outrageous. So, on your first point, to associate the fact that the Earth isn't a spinning sphere uh, with anything to do with Pizzagate is because Pizzagate is a PSYOP. And again, I agree that there's almost definitely terrible things going on in the upper echelons of society. Uh, however, Pizzagate doesn't prove a thing. John Podesta's emails don't prove a thing. They might seem a little bizarre, especially if you use the suggested interpretations given to you by the FBI. But to put that on the same level that the Earth is a frisbee? enclosed in a dome? Okay, first of all, you don't have any idea what the Flat Earth model is, so uh, you're just going by what you think people are purporting. Now, uh, there is no infinite space, okay? According to me, that doesn't exist. The Earth isn't a frisbee in space. It's the physical plane, and space is the area above the physical plane. Okay, there probably isn't a dome. I know that's been sort of married to the Flat Earth hypothesis. Uh, however, th there probably isn't a dome. And if there is, there isn't any evidence for it, so I tend to stay away from that, and I lean towards the idea that there probably isn't a dome. Okay? Now, uh, for you to say that that makes all independent media claims appear to be outrageous, I mean, I see your point. Most rational, well-educated people are going to think that, you know, this is ridiculous, but then again, so do most rational, educated people think that 9-11 being an inside job, or at least not as the official narrative claims, is ridiculous. So I'm sure you were at that point once. Now people were saying there probably weren't any planes. People go so far as to say that maybe nobody died on 9-11. You know, I don't go that far, but people do. Who knows, man, but, um, you know, there comes a point to where the truth seems outrageous in a world full of lies and deception. Okay, so you are, I don't think you're a bad guy. I don't think that you're arguing for the sake of argument. I just think that you are thoroughly deceived. And I really hope and pray that you're able to uh, look at this objectively and uh, prove, prove it wrong with actual data and experiment. And, you know, I would again add that uh, character assassinating people that you've never met, that you don't have any idea what goes on in their personal lives, based on some, you know, questionable emails and their taste in artwork, which is 
poor if, you know, what's floating around out there is accurate and half of it isn't, more than half of it is not accurate um, representations of even the same artists that the Podesta and the other guys have in their homes and businesses. So, you know, but to character assassinate and slander, which is liable, I mean, they can sue you for this, I mean, literally, you know, uh, without anything but circumstantial evidence and uh, emails that were leaked through WikiLeaks that somebody interpolated as, you know, cheese pizza equals little girl. And again, even if that's all true, it's not going to stand up in a court of law. And uh, again, you can be sued for liable for that. So, you know, I think it's really important that we stick to uh, arguments that we can prove and not uh, with arguments that, you know, sort of tug at our heartstrings, which is what the uh, mainstream narrative would like to do. They want us to react in certain ways so as to manipulate us. And so I've made it sort of a personal rule not to react to anything until I've thoroughly investigated it. And I've found that in taking this sort of a position, a uh, skeptical yet open-minded position, um, you know, it really is sort of uh, liberating. Because if you simply are reacting to what either the mainstream or even the alternative narrative is uh, sort of pushing through uh, the channels, um, then you're playing right into the hands of the powers that ought not be uh, simply by reacting uh, either way, by reacting to this uh, scandal, if you will. So flat earthers aren't going around slandering and libeling anybody. Um, we're simply pointing out the fact that the Earth doesn't have any curvature and it's not spinning around in a frickin' vacuum, okay? And to get people back in the, uh, you know, the corral of the mainstream media narrative, I think that's the attempt here. But it's so ridiculous and it's so obviously stupid that it is going to fail. Okay, so I understand that you're still stuck in this uh, spot where you think that the truth is stupid and you think it's a psyop and you think it's a sideshow. Okay, I understand that. However, you, ha you have to get past that. You've got to get to the point to where um, you look at this deeply enough to say, hey, wait a minute, maybe there is something to that. Maybe the fact that the horizon remains fixed at eye level, regardless of altitude, even up to over 100,000 feet, uh, the horizon should drop uh, proportionally with altitude, as altitude is gained, the horizon should drop if the Earth was a sphere, and it doesn't. Um, we should be able to, to, to detect the supersonic eastward velocity of the Earth in the United States, and over a thousand miles an hour, allegedly at the equator, where, you know, the globe Earth hypothesis alleges that not only are you spinning around the equator at 1,037 and a half miles an hour, but that you're also vertically falling around an inverse square curve at 135 miles per hour squared compared to a tangent line from the base point, okay? So uh, without curvature and without axial ro rotation, then the Earth is the contrary to a spinning sphere. And in fact, it is a stationary plane. And once you get your mind wrapped around this, it actually puts a lot of things into perspective, including the propaganda of the Cold War, the space race, the NASA moon landing hoax. Have you even looked into the fact that NASA has faked everything from the Apollo missions to the Pioneer 10 mission to Jupiter, where they uh, beamed back uh, through... Th 360 million miles of space minimum, including over 90 million miles of alleged asteroids, uh, pictures of, uh, or animations of the, the planet Jupiter, uh, which are obviously faked, uh, right up until today, where uh, NASA is telling you and everybody else that they're going to take your children to Mars one day. Do you know that they've been saying that since the 70s and the 80s? We were supposed to have been to Mars, you know, 20 years ago, but they always keep kicking the date back, kicking the date back, okay? So, you know, whatever, dude. Um, you're, you're stuck in this position to where you haven't looked at this, you think it's stupid, and hopefully you'll be taking this video down one day when you realize the truth. Whereas Pizzagate is so overwhelmingly real, the circumstantial evidence is so overwhelmingly massive, uh, when you really take it all into account, that Pizzagate, no matter what they try to do, no matter what they try to do to us in terms of psyops like flat Earth, in terms of terrible 
fake interviews like Megyn Kelly's interview with the owner of Comet Pizza and Ping Pong. Uh, that stuff is not going to silence Pizzagate, and uh, it is my understanding that this is now being formally investigated by multiple federal agencies. Okay, so you're saying that Pizzagate is overwhelmingly real, and the circumstantial evidence is so overwhelmingly massive. That's a quote from you. Now, at least you do admit there that you're dealing strictly with circumstantial evidence, which, again, does not hold up in any court of law. Uh, it only allows for speculation and conjecture. Um, I will again admit that I agree with you that all sorts of really hideous and awful things are afoot within essentially all spheres of power and influence these days. But this Pizzagate thing that you've invested yourself so heavily into is truthfully nothing more than a paper chase, uh, ultimately leading to nowhere but an assault on our First Amendment rights because fake news is affecting very powerful and influential people's uh, personal lives. Now, these are, these are people that you've never met, and you really honestly have zero clue what they do with their spare time in their personal lives. In all honesty, now, you say that you have an understanding that multiple federal agencies are looking into the hashtag Pizzagate scandal. That may be so, that may not be so, but uh, is this similar to the uh, postulation that uh, federal agencies are looking into Trump's election being hacked by Russia? I mean, that's obviously garbage and uh, wholly fiction, but tons of people, millions of people, understand that to be the case. In full-blown error, from an utterly deceived position of ignorance, unfortunate as it is. Now, just look back uh, several years at Ted Gunderson. If you haven't seen his work, I would highly recommend it. He was uh, regional director for the FBI uh, headquarters uh, for, I think, the whole state of California maybe part of California and Arizona or something, but he, the guy was a big deal in the FBI for decades. Um, he, Gunderson, had far better evidence uh, than anything that's purported by the, the Pizzagate scandal. And uh, Ted Gunderson screamed from the rooftops for years, and you're talking about a regional director for the FBI, retired, uh, shouting from the rooftops for years that uh, satanic ritual abuse and uh, you know child trafficking and rape, just awful things were, were rampant uh, in California especially. And uh, he was also shouting from the rooftops that it's being uh, covered up by the authorities and underreported in the mainstream media. And you know what happened as a result of Ted Gunderson's efforts? Well, a lot of people gained an understanding that we have that there's hideous things going on in the upper echelons of society, but ultimately, nothing happened. No, no arrests were made, as far as I know, and um, he's, he's passed on now. The guy's dead, so they don't have to worry about him anymore. Uh, and then you can look, uh, I guess it would be maybe further back into history, or maybe, uh, I guess, contemporaneous with Ted Gunderson's time as original director with the FBI, uh, was the uh, Franklin banking scandal in the, I believe it was the mid-1980s, where a huge, massive uh, child trafficking uh, ring was blown wide open. Um, this is also known as the Boys Town scandal or the Franklin banking scandal. Um, this led straight to the top of the White House. And do you know what happened as a result of that? Absolutely nothing. The uh, PBS or mainstream documentary that was put together, almost ready to air, uh, was shelved. They nixed it, and you never heard anything about it for 20 years. <laughs> now, I really hate to, you know, rain on your parade here, but um, you will honestly not accomplish anything whatsoever by regurgitating what you've been led to believe about Pizzagate. The only thing that you might accomplish is playing right into the hands of the powers that ought not be. So, and you're doing this by damaging, uh, committing violence or damaging the lives of people who may or may not be involved with the terrible acts that they're being accused of. Now, the certain elements of our government want total control of information and total control of our minds, the long and short of it. Um, the, the word government actually 
etymologically translates to mind control, if you want to know the truth. But um, enacting violence on innocent people, and yes, the Podesta and Alafante's characters are indeed innocent until proven guilty, uh, especially in light of the facts that I've already covered it in great detail. Even you agree that uh, you're dealing strictly with circumstantial evidence, and uh, very weak evidence at that, yet you will continue to sling um, allegations and accusations at these characters, as well as slinging accusations and allegations at flat earth proponents, or static plain truthers, uh, based on ignorance, mind control programming that you've been indoctrinated in since you could speak, uh, or maybe first grade if you were slow on the globe thing, and of course brainwashing and finally unbridled conjecture. That's what's steering this, uh, this whole Pizzagate thing, and your aversion to the truth, being <clears throat> Earth is not a spinning sphere in the infinite vacuum of theoretical space-time. So uh, if you were some loose liberal idiot who was hoping that Pizzagate would never be heard of again, and that that would just be brushed under the rug, you are wrong. And there are recently 500, uh, nearly 500 arrests of suspected child predators and child traffickers just in California alone. Uh, you can look that up. It was on Google News. Okay, so you've been led to believe that 500 arrests have been made for child human trafficking on Google News. Um, do you have any direct correlation between Pizzagate and that? Um, if you did, I would assume that you'd be shouting that from the rooftops, not just vaguely sort of mentioning an article. Maybe you linked it up, I don't know. But, um, you know, 500 arrests in the state of California during what time span? Um, and how is that linked to Pizzagate? Um, I thought that the Alafantes and Podesta characters were based out of Washington, D.C., so, uh, again, California and Hollywood alone are a hotbed for this sort of uh, pedophilia and satanic ritual abuse and human trafficking, um, but I, I just don't see the correlation uh, between that and Pizzagate. Maybe I'm wrong, but again, if you had any direct evidence correlating the two, I I'm pretty sure that you would mention it or link it or describe it in a little bit better detail than just sort of... Um, brushing past it as a uh, mention of a Google article, as if that's, you know, the unbridled truth, because Google News said it, then it must be true. Goodness. Uh, just the other day, and uh, that is, in my view, based on uh, information that I have, that was in part due to Pizzagate information. Uh, based on information that you have yet refused to share or enlighten us with, yeah. Sounds a little bit like conjecture to me, but okie dokie. And that was just the roundup in one state. So this is not going away, and uh, things like Flat Earth will not cause the independent media community to shy away from covering issues that are very important, even if they appear to be unusual. I'm sorry, but again, as unusual as it seems, uh, it is the truth. The Earth isn't a spinning sphere, and when you actually take the time to look at this, you will find... No evidence that the Earth is a spinning sphere, and it is all indeed mind control programming that has been inflicted on us since we were toddlers. All of us, not just you or me, not flat earthers or sphere earthers or white or black or pink people, everybody in the, you know, modern world, okay? Uh, so, speaking of unusual, I've dug a little bit deeper into the Antarctica stuff. And although this is still a developing story and this is not the final word on it, I'm leaning in the direction of believing that the Antarctica stuff is a, uh, an attempt to misdirect and distract the public from this widening Pizzagate scandal. Okay, so you say that you've looked into this Antarctica stuff? This Antarctica stuff? And you believe that it's a... What? I mean, really, could you be any less descriptive? So we want to explore Antarctica and see what's beyond there. Uh, it's the one single, you know, quote-unquote, untapped continent in the entire spherical world, according to you. So you mean to tell me that we went through all of the energy crises that we've been through as a nation, 
uh, purchasing oil uh, from our enemies, you know, over our enemies over there in uh, Saudi Arabia and such for decades and continue to do so, while there is an entire untouched continent on the bottom of the globe where nothing lives. Uh, see, the Antarctic isn't like the, the Arctic, where you've got lots of polar bears and otters and just all sorts of creatures that live in the uh, northern Arctic Circle. Uh, the southern Arctic Circle, nothing lives there except for penguins, and that's it. Okay, so um, we want to... Uh, the United States government was actually very interested in uh, Antarctica, uh, outwardly, openly interested in it up until uh, the 1950s when they sent uh, Admiral uh, Richard Byrd down there for Operation High Jump where they allegedly uh, mapped out Antarctica and allegedly found that there was tons of uh, raw materials there that would be very interesting to corporations and to governments of the entire world uh, bountiful, plentiful uh, resources that we could all use. And what happened after Bird? What happened after Operation High Jump in the 50s? Well, all of the nations, uh, the modern nations in the world at the time, signed the Antarctica Treaty, making it illegal for corporations or governments to go there to extract, you know, oil or coal or what have you. They made it illegal. And then they started the uh, the whole NASA moon landing fakery. Okay, so, I mean, if you really are a, a detective, an open-minded, skeptical, rational person, you've got to look at this and say, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. We should have been tapping the crap out of Antarctica for the last 50 years at least, and yet according to the mainstream narrative, it's off-limits except for very limited... Um, travel by scientists or for scientific purposes only and uh, you know I'm, I'm not any big fan of corporations uh, drilling for oil especially when it's not needed we'll get into that another time altogether um, however I would much rather you know if they're going to insist on drilling for oil then I would prefer that they do it somewhere that it's not going to cause huge disasters like the one off the Gulf of Mexico where it killed, you know, just millions and millions of innocent creatures, uh, damaging our waterways, uh, you know, oil spills all the time. I mean, wouldn't it make more sense to have that kind of stuff going on way down in the Antarctic where it's not going to affect anybody or hardly any animals even? Um, it really doesn't add up, and I hope, uh, you know, as a rational, uh, skeptical person, if you do see this, that at least that one point alone uh, raises an eyebrow, because it doesn't make any sense. If you look at the history of the world, any time that a vast amount of resources are found, uh, they're exploited and sold to us for a profit. And it just doesn't add up that the Antarctic Treaty was signed into law just a few short years after uh, Admiral Richard E. Byrd uh, went down there for Operation High Jump. It doesn't add up at all, so hopefully that will help you. That is my opinion based on a variety of information sources, that whatever they found down there is not that significant and is not even a new finding. It might change our understanding of human history if there are ancient human runes. Uh, down in Antarctica that shouldn't be there at all, that's definitely going to cause an uproar and a lot of curiosity. But I've been told and I've uh, come to the conclusion that this is in fact part of a narrative that is being built, that all these elites like Newt Gingrich are flying down to Antarctica and John Kerry was down there recently. The reason why these DC elites are flying down, at least some of them, is to lend credibility to the notion that they found something amazing and world-changing, something so big that all prior scandals just don't really matter anymore. Just let all the pedophiles go. Just forget about it. We found something awesome down there. Okay, so first of all, they're already letting all the pedophiles go anyway. I mean, if they do catch them and convict them, they just get a few months and they're out. And they have to, you know, willfully uh, register to the sex offenders registry. Most of them don't even do that. If they don't, there's not even any punishment. And, uh, yeah, so they're already letting all the pedophiles go anyway. It's rampant, and uh, 
the system that's the rampant in the, in the government, apparently, and Hollywood and uh, the rap industry, the music industry. I mean, you name it. Where there's money, power, and influence, there's apparently pedophile rings and you know human trafficking rings. I mean, that's a god awful truth. It has nothing to do with Pizzagate. Um, now, the other thing that you said that really strikes a chord with me is that um, you've come to the conclusion that they haven't found anything interesting in Antarctica. Uh, that would include, I suppose, coal and oil. So you're saying there's no coal and oil underneath the entire continent of Antarctica? Uh, have you been down there yourself, you know, to drill beneath the, I don't know, hundreds or thousands of foot deep ice that's been there forever, you know, since long before you were born. Have you ever been to Antarctica? I haven't. I'm not going to say that there is or isn't things there, but I will cite uh, references, you know, for example, Operation High Jump, where the government, in all their honesty, uh, is telling us that, you know, in the 50s, they were telling us that there are resources there. Now, I, I know that there are some new finds, allegedly, of pyramids down there, which would be interesting in any model. I mean, come on, that's interesting. But you've concluded, you've concluded that there's nothing to it? Based on what? Because it doesn't fit your model? Because it doesn't jive with what you've been led to believe? Are you afraid that they might find something interesting in Antarctica? Uh, and again, why the hell haven't we been there drilling for oil for the last 50 to 60 years anyway? Blech. I just can't stand uh, ignorance. I'm sorry. I, I'm not trying to insult you, but uh, for you to say that you've concluded anything about Antarctica based on your research, well, we already know what your research looks like. It's reading Wikipedia, and that's not research. I, I'm terribly sorry, but it isn't. Under two kilometers of ice, it'll blow your mind, and they might even use what are known as lightworks uh, to make it seem as if there's some kind of visitation from aliens. Yes, really. Uh, you have to keep in mind, these are crazy people who rape little kids because they believe in a demon god. Okay, now, honestly, just real quick, and I'm sorry to keep on butting in here, but that's what we flat earthers do, is just butt in where we're not, not wanted, right? But um, if they were going to pull off a deception involving an alien invasion, which is technically, theoretically impossible in the heliocentric model, where the nearest star is so distant and unlikely to even have life, the nearest star with life, you know, uh, with a planet that has life in its solar system, is uh, hypothetically, you know, theoretically so distant that uh, traveling to and from or even finding us from there is just all theoretically impossible. But, you know, if they were going to stage an alien invasion, why in the hell would they do it in Antarctica, where nobody's going to see it except for penguins? Um, don't you think they would do that over heavily populated areas instead? I mean, really, where, are you, where is your logic, dude? Uh, come on now, really? They're going to stage an alien invasion over Antarctica where nobody's going to see it. And if you do see anything of it, it'll be video recordings which can never be faked. Videos can never be faked, right? Goodness. So they're not making the most rational decisions right now. And yes, I've been told that they might actually use Lightworks, uh, a mass, uh, what do you call this, a, a mass presentation around the world to make it seem as if we're being visited by another species when it's all just a light show and in conjunction with nonstop mainstream media coverage of the findings in Antarctica, they're hoping it will cause so much hysteria and curiosity and craziness that Pizzagate and Pedogate will be completely brushed under the rug so I realize that you're heavily invested in Pizzagate, and so you're going to defend all of the time that you, you know, you, the work that you've done, and if Pizzagate is shown to be really a psychological operation, then it's going to make you look extremely foolish. I'm just saying that, you know, uh, it will. Um, so you're going to defend that. So I, I do sort of understand uh, why you would hold on to Pizzagate so tightly, even though it is such a bizarre thing. I don't see why anybody would want to really dwell on that as a topic. I mean, it is sick. I mean, it, it sort of gives me nightmares. What it did when I did my video on Pizzagate, how it's not actually news. Uh, but even just, you know, discussing this sort of thing is, is hideous, is dis despicable. Uh, but so you're... You said that someone told you, and, you know, 
people are not always the, the best sources of information, but you, you won't cite who or where they're getting their information from, but someone told you they might stage in a light a worldwide light show and, and uh, the mainstream media is going to push this light show in the Antarctica finds to shove aside Pizzagate. Um, no. Uh, I mean, they may do all this. Sure, they've got the technology to do it. And yeah, Globeheads will think that this is great, you know, an alien invasion, a lot of people worship the things. I mean, a lot of people are really into the whole ancient alien uh, hypothesis, which, you know, I looked into very heavily for several years, and I was hooked in by that as well. Uh, however, I've completely changed my outlook on that. But the point is that, you, you know, you think that, uh, or, or you hold the position that Pizzagate is sort of the be-all, end-all of truth, when it is circumstantial evidence found in leaked emails that really amounts to nothing, okay? You've spent a lot of time on it, and you know, it, it really takes a, a certain type of person to look at what they've worked on, realize that they've made a mistake, and admit that, they've, that they're wrong. And that goes for Pizzagate, that goes for the spherical Earth. I've been through it, okay, with the, the globe Earth. Okay, you really have to do some soul searching. You got to dig deep. You have to go beyond the programming that we're all very familiar with uh, that started since we were able to speak or even walk or some of us had little solar system mobiles hanging above our cribs when we were babies. So this indoctrination often spans our entire lives and uh everything to you boils down to Pizzagate being shoved aside. Dude, everybody knows, or anybody in the truth movement worth their salt already knows that uh, there is rampant pedophilia, satanic ritual abuse, uh, human trafficking, all that stuff is going on, um, but Pizzagate doesn't prove anything, and just because you've invested your life or your time and you've been successful because of Pizzagate, which is to me kind of sick, um, but because you've been so successful due to Pizzagate, you're going to cling to that. And that's exactly what uh, Globe Earth Alliance or Science has done over the years. They've um, they've sort of painted themselves into a corner where they have to start inventing theories on top of theories on top of theories to make their model work, right? So, like, uh, if we live stuck to the side of a spinning sphere, then in the vacuum of space then what keeps us here, you know, stuck to the sides of it? Well, it's gravity. Well, what is gravity? What is gravity? You have no idea. Okay, next question. <laughs> wow. And by the way, this is called gravity. And so what makes gravity work in galaxies? Oh, then you have to invent dark matter and dark energy, which is all theoretical. And so, uh, you know, much like the globe earth hypothesis and the globe earth proponents have painted themselves into a very narrow corner uh, with all of this intricate, you know, lies and deception, um, I just hate to see, you know, honest or apparently seemingly honest people go down that road with Pizzagate where you have to start... Uh, pushing away evidence that doesn't sort of jive with your milieu, with your worldview, with your work, with what you've been investing your time in. So, you know, I, I would just beg you to prove all things to yourself and not just listen to what people tell you and take that as factual. Don't even listen to me. Do your own research, but actually do research and experimentation. Don't just pull people because polling people will probably never, will, will never get you truth. You may get some in interesting statistics as to what people think, but uh, that isn't a source of first-hand knowledge. That's uh, really just muddying the waters of your own intuition and your own um, process of research. Uh, I was not uh, in contact with him personally, so I've not been able to verify this, but I've been told the publisher of Pizzagate.com which was a website dedicated to uh, organizing some of the information surfacing about Pizzagate. I've been told he's been found dead. 
have not been able to verify those claims yet. But my condolences to his family. Uh, so again, these are elites who are not thinking rationally. And none of us are going to be quiet about Pizzagate. And the authorities under Trump are most definitely investigating, again, uh, based on my information, the raids, the raids in California were partially triggered uh, by Pizzagate information. Okay, so based on your research, uh, you've been led to believe, without citing any evidence, uh, that these 500 very nondescript, elusive arrests in California for apparent human trafficking and sexual predators or whatever, which is extremely common in the state of California, which has millions and millions of people. So statistically speaking, I'd say that they probably bust 500 people all the time in California for that sort of thing. And prior to Pizzagate, of course, right? So I don't see where you're coming from with this. But then you, you go on to say that your research uh, has led you to believe that these 500, 500 arrests were partially triggered by Pizzagate. So I'm not sure how something can be partially triggered. Um, you know, I guess maybe the cor uh, correct way to put it would be uh, Pizzagate was a contributing factor. But no, you have to go for the whole gusto because that's what you're invested in is Pizzagate. Uh, Pizzagate partially triggered these 500 nondescript vague arrests that, according to this so far, have no connection with Pizzagate at all. I don't even see how you could prove or say that it has a uh, connection to Pizzagate unless you're reading it on Google News. Um, Lord knows who wrote that. And maybe it does have something to do with Pizzagate, but I'd appreciate it if you'd cite some evidence, maybe drop a name, an event, a person, you know, a police officer, a detective, something, other than what people have told you and what you think, right? Uh, and just... FYI, the definition of trigger as a verb is, uh, the definition of trigger is uh, either A, a piece such as a lever, this is from Merriam-Webster, by the way, direct quote, uh, a piece such as a lever connected with a catch or detent as a means of releasing it, especially blah blah blah, and that's not the one, uh, two, or B, uh, something that acts like a mechanical trigger in initiating a process or reaction. So either something triggers something, or it doesn't. Um, I don't think you can have two triggers unless you're talking about a double-barreled shotgun. Uh, maybe it was a contributing factor. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't. Did you ever think that possibility? I don't know. I, I guess I'm just being argumentative at this point, but it, uh, that's what we do. We flat earthers. And so scary times in a sense, but also exciting times because none of us are going to back down. We won. We push back. We know what's in the WikiLeaks. We're not going to let somebody like John Podesta slither away. Um, okay, so what exactly have you won? I don't understand what you've won. You've um, colored in the dots right where the numbers told you to from the uh, WikiLeaks stuff that is all coated with pizza and handed to you on a silver platter by the FBI how to decode it or to decipher that code. And then you say, um, you're not going to let uh, people like John Podesta slither away. Now, first of all, I will say that he's innocent, for crying out loud, until proven guilty. Now, I'm not condoning what is alleged to have occurred, but I am condoning due process and all of our rights to a fair trial as opposed to a trial by mob, which is essentially what's going on here. I mean... Uh, and, I, and I hate to play devil's advocate, I mean, I can understand where my position here might uh, seem odd, but put yourself in their shoes, and let's just say that Pizzagate's a bunch of bull crap, okay, just hypothetically. Put yourself in his shoes. Um, you know, how would you feel you're successful, you're one of the top 50 most powerful men in Washington uh, for the pizza dude, which is weird, you know, agreed, but, you know, people marry into families and such, and whatever, uh, Washington, D.C. is a very small place, too, okay? Not a lot of people live there, uh, and in fact, m many parts of Washington, D.C., and I know this firsthand, are really quite terrible ghettos, to be honest. I mean, very impoverished uh, cities with, uh, I know it was the murder, murder capital of the world, 
uh, for some time. I don't know if that's still true. Uh, in terms of per capita, obviously a small little place like D.C. isn't going to have thousands and thousands of murders a month like a giant place like California. But yeah, D.C. Um, is a small place and you've got a lot of impoverished uh, people, a lot of ghettos, honestly. And then you've got some filthy, stinking rich people who've made it. And, uh, you know, I find it very hard to put myself in the shoes of a filthy rich um, person, you know, allegedly raping kids. Okay, that's a very difficult position to put yourself in. But what if the dudes didn't do anything? What if this is all uh, made up? I mean, how would you feel if people, you know, millions of people online were calling you a sexual predator, a pedophile, without any evidence except for some emails that you sent about taking your kids out for pizza or whatever. And, you know, by the way, this isn't political. Um, had I voted, should I have chosen to vote? I probably would have voted for Trump, although I didn't vote at all. I mean, really. I, I don't think I've ever sent an email with the word pizza in it, honestly. I, I Thinking back, I don't think I ever have. Um, but, you know, if you have kids or something, I don't have any kids, I could see this day and age where you might do something like that. So, you know, again, I'm sort of playing devil's advocate here, but uh, I don't condone what they're allegedly doing. I certainly don't condone mob trials and uh, slandering people without any evidence. And I, I, the, the one thing that I do condone is due process in our right uh, to a, a fair trial and our innocence until proven guilty, which is a joke anyway, but at least, you know, we can say that. I don't know if you've ever been arrested before for something silly. Lots of people have. I've been arrested for, uh, the silliest thing I've been arrested for is uh, failure to appear to court uh, for the original charge of possession of another's driver's license. Okay, so, you know, um, I had a fake ID when I was 19. I could buy beer when I was 19. I don't drink beer anymore, uh, except for on New Year's I drank, and at my stepfather's funeral I drank, and I might have had one single beer in between. We're talking, this is in the last year. So, okay, anyway, enough about me. We'll get back to it. Somebody like that is going to be held accountable for all of his crimes, and we're going to branch out. We don't really care if it takes down a lot of dirty politicians. You, you call yourself a journalist, and you put it right there in the beginning of your little spiel here, but uh, we are talking about alleged crimes here, so you need to put your caveats in. And I'm not arguing semantics here. I'm arguing, you know, this is, you, you're liable for what you say if you're making claims like this, calling someone a criminal, uh, saying that somebody's not going to get away with their crimes when there isn't any evidence for crimes and no trial yet. We, we're going to take down who we need to take down. And you can't kill all of us. You can't silence all of us. Uh, the mathematics are not in your favor. Kill and silence all of you? So is that like sort of your solution for everything? Is if you disagree with somebody, you either kill or silence them? I, I don't understand. Is there any evidence for uh, Pizzagate proponents, Pizzagate theorists uh, being killed or silenced? Any conclusive evidence, or you're just making this up as you go along? Uh, so that's it here. Uh, stay safe, everybody. And uh, final thing I'll put out that I normally do not do, I'm going to give all of you uh, free access to my newsletter because the research I do... Okay, yeah, I'm going to end this right here, too. Uh, you actually, the, the video actually goes on for another five minutes, but uh, he's essentially wrapping it up. I'm not going to finish watching it. I don't want his newsletter... He talks about his research, which, uh, as far as I can tell, doesn't exist. Um, regurgitation is great. I mean, it, that's it's excellent, excellent research. Let me say. So um, anyway, uh, while I've while I've got you here, um, I do spend a lot of time on my videos. If you want to support this channel, you can do so directly through PayPal. To uh, it's more easy now if you do it to the direct link. Uh, paypal.me slash themorgyle1 uh, or through paypal the normal way to j-o-n-e-lance at gmail.com or uh, directly through fan funding on youtube while that still exists 
So anyway, uh, with that, God bless you all. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, spread the word, spread the world, and peace.